Next station on two, it's connected. And we copy, Andy. Thanks. We're going to keep looking into it. Station Houston on two, for y'all's awareness, um, the NBC News might be running a little bit ahead, so um, if you, I see you guys are getting in place now, but I will make call up a little bit before the 1317 mark to get started. And I also wanted to bring awareness for anybody hanging out in the Node 1 area. Um, it is a live feed, and so uh, they'll, they will be in the view. Jason, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we are ready for the event. NBC Morning News Now, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check.
Station, this is NBC Morning News Now. How do you hear me? Good morning. We've got you loud and clear. Welcome to the International hello, Space hello. Station. Thank you. Can y'all hear me? Hello, Jasmine, Andreas? Hello. 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 Welcome to the oh, International great. Space Station. We hear you loud and clear. Oh. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. We're not live quite yet. We're about to be. Can I just have you both say your names so I make sure I say them correctly? My name's Andreas. Jasmine. And your last name? And your last name? Uh, Mogensen. Okay. Belly. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome back. We are so excited about our next guest. In August, NASA's SpaceX Crew-7 mission launched to the International Space Station. Now, they're already more than halfway through their six-month mission, and the work they are doing is pretty neat. They are conducting more than 200 science experiments and technology demonstrations to prepare for missions to the moon, to Mars, and beyond. And guess what? We have them joining us now live from space. We are with astro NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli and Expedition 70 Commander Andreas Mogensen. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. We are so excited to talk to you. It really blows my mind that we even can talk to you. Jasmine, I will start with you. I know that you were selected by NASA to join the 2017 astronaut candidate class, and now you are currently on your first mission in space. So what's it been like? You've been up there for four months. How's it going? It's been awesome. So I was a little <laughs> nervous before launching. I was like, well, you know, I've wanted this my entire life. What if I get up there? And I'm like, uh, you know, this is just OK. Um, but it is not disappointed at all. Um, floating is just the coolest thing. Looking back at <laughs> Earth, uh, I mean, every time I look back at Earth, I'm I'm blown away. Um, and then the International Space Station itself is just um, an absolute marvel of human engineering. So uh, I've loved every moment up here, and it's going by way too quickly. Oh, that is so neat to hear and, and satisfying to hear that floating is as fun and cool as we all think it would be. Um, Andreas, I know that you're not. Look at that. Look at the mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you for indulging us in that. Um, Andreas, you're more than halfway through the mission. I mentioned your commander here. Tell us about your role and what you'll have tackled so far during this mission at the International Space Station. I said all those science experiments, things like that. What exactly does that mean? Well, we have a, a terrific team up here. We are seven astronauts on board the International Space Station, um, and we get along uh, really well. We uh, learned or we got to know each other during the uh, year and a half of training prior to launch. And uh, everything's been going really smoothly so far. And we've been able to concentrate on the scientific research and technology development that we do up here. And it really spans the, uh, the gamut from physics, chemistry, biology, human physiology, medicine, to material science, atmospheric science. I mean, just to give you a couple of uh, examples, lately we've been working on um, uh, brain cells to understand how uh, cells age in space. Uh, we've been working with our biofabrication facility, which essentially is a, a 3D printer for human tissue where we can print uh, simulants wow. of, of human organs uh, and other uh, wow. human tissues. Um, yeah, it, it's really incredible. What? We've been studying giant lightning strikes uh, that shoot upwards uh, out towards the edge of space from the top of thunderclouds. So really, it's a very wide variety of scientific uh, research we can do up here. Wow, no kidding. That's incredible that this same team is doing all those different types of things. You guys are just 
Amazing. Jasmine, I know you are part of the fourth all-female spacewalk in history. I love this. I have interviewed Christina Cook before. I'm not sure. I assume you all maybe kind of at least know each other, but, you know, I know she was part of the first couple. Um, what was it like for you to know that you are now part of history, being part of that fourth walk, and just kind of what it means to be? What does it feel like to be, to know that you are doing this with just all women and that it's breaking barriers? First off, just going out on my first spacewalk uh, itself was just one of the top experiences of my entire life. Um, just being out there, knowing you're relying on yourself, your crewmate, and the team back on the ground. Going out with Laurel, who's a good friend of mine, um, and also uh, one of my classmates uh, from the 2017 selection on her face, first spacewalk as well. And then, you know, on the ground guiding us through it was Anne McLean, who I overlapped with at Test Pilot School. So just a, a great group overall to be uh, working with and, and really proud of, of what we accomplished. Oh, absolutely. Well, this last question is for the both of you. Just, you know, I know that it sounds like you both love what you do, which is just so incredible to hear you talk about. Um, but you're also away from your families. Of course, it's the holidays. What helps you get through being apart from loved ones, especially at a time of year like this when you are in space? Well, the good thing is, uh, even though we're in space, we're not uh, that isolated anymore. Thanks to... Uh you know, our communication uh, assets up here, we can, uh, you know, talk to our uh, f uh, family and friends on video um, almost daily if we want to. Uh, we also have access to email and, and, and the internet. So there's lots of opportunities for us to keep contact with our family and friends, uh, especially over here in the ho yeah. during the holidays, which is nice. Absolutely. And then I just tried, tried to find little ways to connect uh, with my family back home and, and my two girls. Um, you know, uh, we just finished up Hanukkah celebrations. Each night I would send them a mm. video of me putting a, another light on the felt menorah <laughs> they had sent up for me. Um, I've got my crew quarters decorated with ornaments, which are mostly pictures of my girls or us as a family. So just little things to, to feel connected uh, to them back home. Okay, the dreidel spinning in space is a pretty epic video. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Jasmine Mogbelli, Andreas Mogensen, we appreciate you both. Thank you so much. And what an incredible, exciting thing you guys are up there doing. We really appreciate you calling in all the way from the International Space Station. Thank you and happy holidays. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Station, this is Houston ACR, and that concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from NBC Morning News Now. Station, we are resuming operational audio communications.